Hello and welcome on the front. My name is Matt and on today's episode we're going to be exploring the battle for the Ray Margaret Bridge, which you can see right behind me. So come with me and let's explore the battlefield. I'm in the town of Raymargen, just along the Rhine River, and I'm walking up towards the Ludendorff Bridge, which is the uh, bridge's uh, original name. The bridge itself has quite a remarkable story, actually. It was first constructed in 1916, and it was built to support the German army during the First World War. Uh, it's also where it gets its namesake, uh, Ludendorff Bridge, named after the German general, uh, Erich Ludendorff, who was the uh, commander of the German forces. The bridge itself, uh, was built by Russian prisoners of war and during the construction of the bridge they actually pre-drilled uh, holes so that if the bridge was ever to be uh, captured or fall into enemy hands they would be able to blow the bridge uh, quite easily. Um, after the First World War the French took over this entire area and they actually pre-filled the, uh, the concrete holes with concrete uh, so as to avoid any efforts I imagine of sabotage uh, moving forward. Um, the Nazis reclaimed this area in 1936 as the entire Rhineland uh, became a demilitarized zone as part of the Versailles Treaty after the end of the First World War. Um, and when Hitler recaptured the Ludendorff Bridge by marching his troops back in here, it was quite a flagrant um, uh, disobedience of the Versailles Treaty itself. But the French and the British didn't want to do anything uh, because they were fearful uh, they would actually start a, uh, another war. Um, in 1938, quite ominously actually, the, uh, Hitler ordered that this bridge, as well as many other German bridges, uh, be pre-prepared with explosives and some 60 uh, zinc line boxes were strategically placed all over the bridge um, as they felt that should the bridge ever need to be uh, destroyed, having pre-prepared positions or pre-prepared explosives uh, would actually make it easier uh, to do this. Um, now this actually uh, in the end spelled a disaster for the Germans as the Mülheimbrücke in uh, the city of Cologne uh, was, well I say accidentally destroyed, uh, at least from the German perspective because during an Allied uh, bombing mission in 1944, one of the uh, American bombers actually hit one of the pre-prepared explosive positions and destroyed the entire bridge as it set off a complete train reaction. Um, Hitler was then you know, furious at, the, at, at what had happened. He actually had the engineers uh, court-martialed as well, which you know, really put a lot of fear into a lot of the engineers who were in charge of wiring and looking after these bridges, as they themselves didn't want to get court-martialed. Um, so then the, the orders came through that the bridges or the pre-prepared explosive, uh, explosives were to then be um, removed. Uh, and then uh, once the enemy was in within a certain distance that the, um, the bridges were then to be rewired uh, and then detonated. And that, I think in a lot of, place, a lot of ways, goes uh, a very long way in explaining why the Ludendorff Bridge was actually uh, still standing when the, um, uh, when the US 9th Army Division uh, approached the town uh, of Raymargen itself. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have a look inside the museum. If you can see behind me, it's actually began to uh, it's begin to rain. So I'm going to have a look at the Ray Margan uh, uh, Museum, which is now called the Museum of Peace. Hopefully it's open. Uh, I'm not sure the opening time said that uh, it was uh, could be closed. So we'll have a look. Uh, hopefully it is and I can get myself out of the rain. So come with me and let's check out the museum. Unfortunately, the museum is closed and won't reopen again until the 29th uh, of June. But that's okay, because while we're here, let's go and explore what remains of the rest of the region. Operation Lumberjack was the US operation to push their forces towards the Rhine River, but their orders were to stop when they reached their objective. Uh, it was to be the British under Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery who were to cross the Rhine first, further north under Operation Plunder, a meticulously planned operation. But as luck would have it, it would be the US 9th Division who would have the opportunity to cross the Rhine River first. Nicknamed the Phantom Division uh, because of the German army had actually repeatedly reported that the 9th Division had been completely destroyed, but the unit just kept on coming back. 
Um, Lieutenant uh, Colonel Engerman uh, on the 7th of March 1945 was shocked and amazed to find that the Ludendorff Bridge was still intact when he looked through his, mount uh, through his binoculars in the mountains just behind me to see the bridge still intact and the German 15th Army frantically running across. Um, he tasked uh, Lieutenant Timmerman to take an advance force as well as some of the uh, Army's very brand new M26 Pershing tanks to seize the town of Raymargen and to capture the bridge. Lieutenant Engelman said, uh, although he was disobeying direct orders to not go into the town of Raymargen, seeing the bridge intact, he said he felt that it was an opportunity of a lifetime to, uh, to seize the initiative. And that is exactly what he did. Lieutenant Timmerman, as he entered the town of Raymargen, came under bitter resistance. Uh, and it took him until 3.15 in the afternoon to reach um, the, um, uh, the foothold of the bridge itself. Once they made it here, the German forces frantically ran across. Timmerman seized the opportunity to rush the bridge. As they were on top, the Germans tried to detonate. The uh, bridge shook tremendously and plumes of black smoke shot up into the air, but the bridge remained standing. Now, there are many reports as to why the bridge didn't come down. Some say it was because of poor explosives. Uh, some say because of the wiring, rewiring, unwiring of the bridge that had happened before then. Some say that it was just plain luck. I personally think that it was probably a mixture uh, of all three. Three. But as Timmerman uh, and his troops made it to the, onto the bridge, they were cutting wires wherever they could to prevent any, uh, any German attempts to re-blow the bridge. And it was uh, Sergeant Alexander Dabrick who would, have the, who would have the honor of being the first US soldier, and in fact the very first foreign soldier since the Napoleon armies, to cross the Raymargen Bridge. Uh, once across, the US Army quickly set up a, uh, a bridgehead uh, and the German defences uh, from there just completely fell apart. So what we're going to have a look now here is what the battle would, would have been like for the German forces defending on the other side. So come with me and let's go have a look. I'm now standing on the eastern banks of the Rhine River at Raymargen on the, other, on the other side of Ludendorff Bridge from where we were just standing. It was here that the 15th Army had set up the main bulk of its defence uh, of the Ludendorff Bridge. Situation facing the German Army by March of 1945 was seemingly helpless. Their failed push through the Ardennes and the Battle with the Bulge saw the German forces severely weakened by this. Uh, taking full advantage, the US Army were able to quickly capture vast swaths of territory on the western banks. Hitler had inexplicably given the order that the German army was not to retreat to the natural defences of the Rhine River, a natural defence that had served the Germans uh, even dating as far back as the Romans 2,000 years ago. This natural obstacle is a formidable crossing, uh, at some points measuring as wide as 400 metres. Um, the the defence of the bridge fell to Captain Bratka, uh, and it was up to him to defend the Raymargen Bridge from the advancing US troops. Now let's go up top to have a look at what kind of preparations were made to defend the bridge. The weather is unfortunately not being very nice to me today, but that's German summer, I suppose. Uh, okay, so the bridge defences uh, fell to the bridge commander, Captain Bradker, who had 1,000 troops uh, under his command, the bulk of which were made up of some 500 Volkssturm, about 180 Hitler Youth, 200 uh, Luftwaffe ground crew, uh, and the rest were sort of mixed together patched units that he managed to uh, put together in the weeks uh, leading up to the uh, battle for the bridge itself. Uh, he was relieved of his command at 11.20 in the morning with the arrival of a major sheller, who tried to build upon the existing defences uh, below, but the situation was, well, hopeless. Um, he even went as far as trying to acquire uh, some of the uh, German units that were still retreating, asking them to take up defensive positions, but it is reported here that some of these German units just sped off. Um, Realising the situation again was hopeless, he came up here and began preparation for, the, uh, for, de for detonation. Um, uh, and a young uh, lieutenant by the name uh, of uh, Lieutenant Peters, he was responsible for an experimental uh, anti-aircraft system called the Herschel 297 rocket, uh, 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 rocket system. Um, he was worried that he, this would fall into the hands of the Americans, so he begged Schiller for more time. It was also during this time that uh, Lieutenant Kriesman, who was responsible for the detonation, had asked uh, Captain Bradka for written uh, permission to blow the bridges. It was also worth noting here that the bridge could only be uh, 
uh, detonated by a written command. Um, but because Bratka was no longer the uh, bridge commander, he then needed written order from Scheller. Um, this sort of facetious attention to detail bought the American 9th Armoured Division uh, valuable time as they uh, crossed the river. Um, once Kriegsman had uh, obtained the written order from Scheller, he then detonated the bridge. But like we mentioned before, the bridge detonation failed to go off and the US were able to make their way on the other side and set up their bridgehead. And it was during this time, during the setup of the bridgehead, that the Americans were at their most exposed. They weren't to know, of course, that the situation for the Germans on the defensive um, was chaotic and sporadic. Um, but here is where you run the real risk of any sort of counter-attack. Um, once the uh, Germans realized the Americans were on this side and setting up a bridgehead, the, also as well the uh, M26 Pershings were just uh, hammering this position uh, as well. And you can see um, a, a lot of uh, battle damage uh, in, in the tower still seen here today. Um, once, said, once the Americans were on this side, the uh, German forces then began to retreat into the tunnel of the Raymargen Bridge. So let's have a look now at what is left of the tunnel. The tunnel at Raymargen has ultimately been sealed up and is actually today uh, an indoor theatre called the uh, tunnel in the theatre or, or something along those lines. Um, but it was here once the uh, uh, Germans uh, had retreated to, once they realised that the US were uh, setting up their bridgehead on the other side. Once the US made their way onto the top of the bridge here, they began shooting and throwing grenades into the tunnel. But unbeknownst to them, a number of civilians had also taken refuge in there as well. And uh, Some of the civilians were unfortunately uh, killed and wounded uh, in the crossfire. And it was actually the civilians that pressured Captain Bratka to ultimately surrender uh, the tunnel. He them giving the, uh, the civilians the order to uh, wave the white flag and uh, surrender to the Allies. Uh, Major Schiller managed to escape through the rear of the tunnel on pushbike. He then rode to the um, uh, German High Command to report that the bridge had fallen into the Allies' hands intact. Um, Hitler, of course, was completely outraged and he put together a number of kangaroo courts uh, in order to punish those who he thought was responsible. Major Scheller, who had only arrived on scene a few hours before the Americans, uh, was found guilty of negligence of duty uh, and he was subsequently executed. Um, 22 years later, though, um, this um, um, uh, failure of a duty would actually be reversed and he would be exonerated uh, for the court-martial. Uh, Lieutenant Peters was also uh, court-martialed as well and executed. Um, he was quite simply just a passerby who wanted to get his own units across. Um, but Hitler didn't care and anybody who was in any way tied to this bridge uh, was to be executed. Captain Bradka too was sentenced to die in Abstasia as of course he had actually surrendered to the Allies uh, once they took the bridge itself. Um, in the days that followed, though, the um, uh, Germans would throw everything they had at trying to destroy the bridge, and the U.S. defences would actually be the largest um, uh, concentration of anti-aircraft defences uh, that the Americans had ever put together. So let's now discuss uh, what those defences actually look like. I'm now standing on the peaks of the eastern banks of the Rhine River and you can see from here uh, you have a very commanding view of the Ludendorff Bridge itself. It was here in fact that the uh, German defences were supposed to mount their uh, anti-aircraft uh, guns but for the luck of the Allies uh, the uh, Germans were unable to do this. It would actually be the Allies uh, who would mount their own anti-aircraft defences here. In fact the US actually launched their uh, largest anti-aircraft defences uh, of the entire war, stationing some five uh, anti-aircraft battalions, not only here, but in the surrounding valley and, and peaks below me as well. Uh, and that is because when the bridge fell, Hitler ordered that it he immediately des uh, destroyed and launched some uh, large-scale uh, counter-attacks, but these counter-attacks uh, were to no avail and ultimately ended in the uh, unnecessary uh, casualties of German soldiers and then the further capture of uh, around about 11,000 German soldiers as well. Um, the German Luftwaffe through really everything they had at trying to destroy this bridge, even um, launching their own Messerschmitt 262s, uh, which were the first uh, jet power engine, again to no avail. Hitler ultimately approved even the use of the V2 rocket to uh, destroy the bridge as well. The V2s came quite close to the bridge, some landing as close as 200 metres, uh, but the sheer scale of the um, uh, American anti-air uh, defences really saw the Luftwaffe have no effect here. Um, 
The bridge itself uh, would collapse uh, on the 17th of March 1945. Uh, during the bridge's capture, uh, no Allied soldiers or American soldiers were killed, uh, but unfortunately when it collapsed under its own uh, sort of strain and fatigue from the extreme use of it over those 10 days, um, killed unfortunately 33 uh, uh, American engineers and injured a further 63. But by this time, the um, Allies had managed to really exploit the um, uh, advantage that they had from taking the bridge. Uh, they brought across as many as 25,000 uh, Allied troops into the now Ray Margan bridgehead. Uh, they'd also managed to build a two further bridges, uh, one pontoon and one heavy steel bridge, to uh, also allow the um, uh, Americans to get across the Rhine River as well. Uh, I mentioned before that the capture of, of Ray Margan Bridge had a strategic outcome uh, for the war, and I don't mean that to say that you know the Germans could have won the war or anything like this, but um, it is agreed by most historians, both Allied and uh, German military historians, that the capture of the Ray Margan Bridge actually shortened the length of the war by about two weeks. Uh, and that of course has a, a great deal and a great effect uh, on the soldiers who are of course serving on the ground. Uh, and we also see that also translated into um, less casualties um, taken by uh, Patton's crossing further to the south and uh, Montgomery's crossings of the Rhine River further to the north as the um, capture of the Ray Margan Bridge really acted as a vacuum for much of the German forces who tried so desperately to focus their attention to destroy uh, the bridge itself and resulted in, you know, uh, in some ways easier crossings or at least uh, much uh, fewer casualties than perhaps could have been expected had this bridge have not been taken. Um, and that's actually where I'll, uh, I'll end today's uh, video. Uh, let me know your thoughts in those comments down below if you think that the capture of Ray Margan Bridge uh, did uh, shorten the war by two weeks. If you like this video, remember to hit that subscribe button. And remember, if you would like more content from me, to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And I'll see you next time on The Front.